In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct a Levine's test of homogeneity of variance that is more robust than a typical test that you get automatically with the independent sample t-test. And before I show you the robust version, I'm going to show you something about the nature of the Levine's test based on the non-robust version so that we can carry on to look at the robust version. So I mentioned in the textbook that the Levine's test is a test of the difference between absolute deviations mean absolute deviations. And let's look at that a little bit more closely here. So one way I can get mean absolute deviations in SPSS is to first calculate the mean for the two groups. Now I can get that in a table, but I want to get it in a column of data. So I'm going to go into data and use this seldomly used aggregate function and put pitch speed into the summaries of variables and group and the break variables. And when I click on this, you can click on function and you can see the default is the mean. And I want that. I can get the median as well, which I'll do for the robust version of this test that I'm going to show you in a minute. So let's do the mean from the ground up, do the Levine's test of homogeneity of variance that's not robust. Well, it's relatively robust, but not as robust as the one I'm going to show you. So you can see that the mean has been calculated for the first group at 78.9 and 78.21 for the second group. So each case with a 2 has a 78.21 accorded to it. And each case with a group 1 has a 78.109 accorded to it. Now I can calculate deviations from the mean for each case by subtracting these values. So transform deviation and its pitch speed, this variable here, minus the corresponding variable's mean for that group that it belongs to. And so here are the deviations. So 79.49 minus 78.09, that gives you 1.40. And for this person, it's a negative value because they were lower. 77.09 minus 78.09, that gives you negative 1. So these deviations are a reflection of spread in the data. But if I calculate the mean of this, I'm going to get a 0 because there's a mixture of positive and negative values. And the same is true of the other group. I would get a 0, which would suggest that they have the same level of spread, which is not true. We actually do know that the major leaguers have less variability. So let's change this into absolute values. So I'm going to call it deviation absolute. And to get absolute values, I can use this command here, absolute parentheses, and put the deviations in there. And that creates a variable with no negative values. They're all positive. So what do you think is going to happen if I conduct an independent sample t-test on the mean absolute deviation for group 1 and the mean absolute deviation for group 2? Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. It's actually the Levine's test of homogeneity variance. I'm going to get exactly the same result. So let's prove that. Pair means independent sample t-test. Let me throw that out. So I would put group in the group variable, and it would be group 1 and 2. Click Continue and then deviation absolute, but I'm going to do it for pitch speed, the original raw score, and the absolute deviations. Let's see what we get. And the key result here is that we get an F value of 16.536, which is statistically significant, P less than 0 0.001. That's based on the original raw scores. Now when I did a t-test on the absolute deviations, the test of the difference between the mean deviations of 0.4375 versus 0.9986, that's the mean absolute deviation for major leaguer and minor leaguer, that difference in the absolute deviation mean is associated with a t value of negative 4.06. Let me square negative 4.066, it's a negative value, and square it, I get 16.532, which is essentially identical within rounding to the f value that I got from the Levine's test of equality variances. And that's the relationship between t and f. You can square a t value to get the corresponding f distribution value. So this proves that the Levine's test is simply a test of the difference between the mean absolute deviations between two or more groups. Now this opens up the possibility of doing a robust test, an even more robust test of homogeneity of variance, or the test of the variance between two groups, by using the median rather than the mean. The median is a measure of central tendency that is less affected by non-normality in distributions. And so I could calculate a new aggregate variable that is based on 
the median rather than the mean, click continue, click OK, and here's my new variable, pitch median 78.15 for group 1, 78.07 for group 2. In the typical case, the means will be a little bit more different than they are here, but you know, the benefit is the same. You're, that's the main benefit is that you'll get the, the means for each group, and then transform, and deviation absolute median, I'm going to call this, Actually, I should call it deviation median because I have to calculate the first one first. So pitch speed minus pitch speed median gives me a new deviation score. And then I need to square this deviation score. Transform compute. Absol deviation median absolute. ABS parentheses. Put deviation median in there. Click OK. And that gives me a new variable, deviation median absolute. And I could reconduct the test of the difference between the mean absolute median deviations. So I'll throw these out and put the deviation median absolute in there and rerun the analysis. And this gives me a more robust result than that based on the mean. And you can see that it's very similar because the data are actually normally distributed in this case negative 3.914 and from a Levine's test of equality of variance perspective you have like by the way you have to ignore this because this is no longer an accurate test when it's based on the absolute deviations you can't use this F test you have to use the T test so this would equal if I could square it to get the equivalent F value negative 3.914 equals and square that equals 15.319 again ignore this one because this is no longer accurate on the absolute deviations this is now it is a little bit more robust to do it on the median but the most robust way to test the difference between two variances especially if you have some non-normality in your data is to bootstrap this difference and we can do bootstrapping if you have access to the module you can compare means in the Bennett sample t-test and bootstrap this difference and we'll do it on 2,000 replications, bias corrected, accelerated, and click OK. So this is going to run the bootstrap version, which assumes no level of normality, with the median as the central measure of tendency to get the absolute deviations. And again, we can see down here that the mean difference between the absolute deviations is equal to negative 0.55. And so the minor leaguers have a mean absolute median deviation of 0.98, and the major leaguers have 0.43. And that difference, mean difference of negative 0.554, is statistically significant negative 0.808 and negative 0.308. And because these are both on the negative side, we would reject the null hypothesis of equal variances or equal variability in the major leaguer and minor leaguer data. Now this technique could be applied to any data. You calculate the median and get the absolute median deviations and then calculate a bootstrap version of the independent sample t-test on the difference of those two mean absolute median deviations. I know it's a bit of a mouthful to think about that way and to say it, but that is what the test is. So I'll, for those of you who are really into doing very precise and very proper statistics, this is obviously a very attractive option.